Hey guys, this is Daniel with Pwn CNC, and we're here to hook up my spindle kits uh, directly into the Shipoko so that I can control it via G code and that sort of thing. Um, stick with me. Okay, so as you can tell here, I've already run the cable um, between my VFD and the uh, machine. Um, I've got the VFD open, it is powered off and unplugged. Um, so that I, you know, because there is power going right through these three lines here, so we don't want to risk uh, hitting that or anything. But we're going to take the red line and the black line here. VF1 is going to be right here. It's the, uh, on this big long terminal, it is the second one over. That's a VF1. Put in the uh, terminal and screw that down. We're going to take the uh, next one, which is the black, and this is going to go into the ground line, a GND, and that is the uh, fourth one over. So, fourth one over, pop that in, tighten that down, and you are good to go. Oop, I'd hope my bits didn't fall out of my uh, screwdriver here. So, I've got the, uh, the VFD side of this uh, equation all set up. I've got my cover here, which covers up and allows you to uh, cover up the wires and that sort of thing. I've already run it, the PWM cable through the middle channel up, and of course I zip tied it in from the bottom. So um, that's ready to go. Pop the cover back on it, and we're ready to switch over to the, uh, to the CNC itself. Okay, now what you see here, I've got the side of my, uh, this is my Shipoko Pro, but it relates to uh, the Shipoko 4 and the Shipoko 3, um, assuming it is, um, you purchased the Shipoko 3 prior to Black Friday on 2019. <laughs> it's all noted on, on the product page, but um, I've got the other end of the, line, of the uh, PWM line. Here's the controller side um, with the Molex connector. There's a little, um, uh, catch here, a little lip here, that's going to be on the right side or the outside of the machine. And it basically comes in here like this. We've got a, a the ground common cable is the top left up here. The uh, power or the PWM cable is the middle um, on the right side. So we're gonna take that and slide that in. Now these things are kind of finicky. Um, fortunately, I haven't found a really good Molex collector, connector that I like yet. But what you can do is open up your case, and that way you can grab the back side of this board connector, and it allows you to hold on to it to give it a little, um, get a, give it a little strength to keep it from uh, peeling off or anything, because we don't want to break the board, obviously. Just push that in. Um, once that's in, you're all set to go. Um, we literally just put the cover back on, and I'm ready to uh, jump over to software. Let's, uh, let's do that. Okay, so hopefully you've been able to uh, follow along with the wiring up the VFD and wiring up the uh, CNC machine itself. Um, obviously these instructions are all covered in my manual, in the latest copy of my uh, spindle kit manual. Um, looks like, should better find the page here. Looks like on page uh, 19 um, is where the automation page starts. And of course I talk about the PWM and that sort of thing. It does talk about, um, there are two different flavors of PWM. There's either zero to five or zero to 10 volts. Uh, all of the Shapokos are zero to five. So we're gonna need to make some adjustments in the VFD's coding um, to, uh, to account for that and to kind of speed things up. So whenever you're running your machine, the, and, and running the G file code, right? Um, what it's gonna do is it's going to uh, get it into position it's got your bit all set and everything like that. When it starts up that spindle, when it starts getting it spinning, we want that to accelerate fast enough um, so that it gets up to speed prior to making contact with the stock material. So there's some acceleration settings in there that we're going to adjust as well. And um, that is all covered on page, where did the page go? That is on page, uh, here it is. Page 21, down here towards the bottom, configuring the VFD for PWM control. So let's uh, get a zoom of the um, VFD, and I can walk you through how to do that. All right, here we are with a close-up of the VFD itself. Um, it's in off state, which means it's blinking. 
Now the first thing we need to do is tell it to um, use this dial. Instead of using this dial, which is probably what you're configured for right now, we want to change that to use the PWM cable that comes into the, that we just wired up earlier. So we're going to hit mode. We're going to change this. Um, it'll probably be zeros all the way across on yours. Um, I was just in there playing with the settings. But we're going to change this to uh, P0.0.4. Now this is all outlined right here in the uh, manual on, line, on page uh, 21. Um, obviously we want this setting, so once you hit, set the uh, up and down arrow in the mode, you know to get to that setting, hit enter. This is the current default setting. We want to change that to a 3. This basically tells the uh, VFD that the PD PWM signal, or the line that's coming in on VF1, is our frequency controller. So whatever that line says is the frequency. It's going to start ignoring this dial here, so you can't just change it mid-cut mid, mid uh, cut or anything like that by changing this. basically disables this dial. So we're going to hit enter, and that accepts it. Now the next setting we want to do is to uh, speed it up. So we're going to jump back up to, uh, we're going to jump over to P0.0.11, so 11, P11. We're going to hit enter. Right now it's set at 20 seconds, which means it takes 20 seconds for it to um, spin up to full speed, um, you know, to ramp that RPMs from zero all the way up to the desired RPM stage. It's going to take 20 seconds to do that, but that's way too slow. We need to speed that up so that um, our uh, so that the spindle is at full speed when it touches the stock. Now these smaller bits that we're using, um, a faster acceleration is perfectly acceptable, and four is a good round number for considering the size um, um, cutter bits and that sort of thing that we're using. So I'm going to hit enter there. We're also going to go to uh, 12, so we want it to spin down fast as well so that we can change bits. We're going to put change the uh, P0.0.12, change that also to a 4. There we go. So you'll notice I'm using this right arrow which moves the cursor to the right and then circles back to the, uh, back to the beginning. And then of course I'm going to use these up and down arrows to change the value and then hit enter, and that accepts the value. Now for the Shapokos, there is one final setting that we need to configure, and that is the 0 to 5 volts. Um, since the PWM coming off from carbide, from, from the Shapoko controllers, is 0 to 5 volts. So we're going to change the cursor over to this uh, P, change this to P2. Um, that zeroes out all the other settings. Put P2.0 dot one five. So once we've got that in there, hit enter. By default, it comes in at zero to 10 volts. Now what we're gonna do is just change this to a five volt. This is the maximum um, value of the PM, PWM whenever it receives that signal. So whenever the there is five volts coming across that PWM wire, it knows that it wants to run, that we wanna run the spindle at full speed, which is programmed for 24,000 RPMs. So we're going to hit enter there, and we're going to hit mode, because we are now all done. Um, we need to uh, switch over to the software uh, on, on Carbide Motion, and we'll uh, proceed to the next step. All right, here we are with uh, Carbide Motion pulled up. Um, let me switch back over to the run. Um, so I have already turned on my machine. Um, I've already homed it. Um, we're in the bit setter and all that stuff on it. It's ready to go. I'm ready to load up a file and that sort of thing. But before we proceed, we need to do a couple of things. First, I'm going to switch this down to a smaller screen so that I can pull up, hit settings, show log. I would like to see the settings as I am using it. So I'm going to try. There we go. Perfect. So I've got the uh, log pulled up. Now we're going to go back to settings, pull up our dialog again. And I'm going to uh, configure it that on the second tab, Options, has automatic spindle control. We're going to check that box. Um, we have a new feature now, right? So once that's in there, just hit OK. So Options 
has automatic spindle control. Okay, so now you're all set. Now we need to actually run a few commands. And this is kind of outlined on, um, we're starting actually at the top of page 22. So on 22, I actually described some G code command or some Gerbil commands, G R B L commands that we need to run. And what we need to do is first find out what we've got. So I'm going to hit uh, put two dollar signs in there and hit enter. And what that does is over here in our log, it outputs our entire uh, Gerbil configuration. Now, if I scroll down a little bit, you can actually see so. Z uh, dollar sign zero, dollar sign one, all of these basically relate to various things, um, configurations of your machine. The length, the width, the height, um, the speed, the acceleration, the amount of uh, voltage that's going to the uh, um, stepper motors, all that, all that sort of thing is all defined right here. But the ones we're interested in are actually um, dollar sign 30, 31, and 32. So in my uh, manual here on page 22, we actually have to change um, dollar sign thirty. We want that to be the full RP, the maximum RPMs of our motor. And in our case, all of the motors that um, Pwn CNC sells is twenty four thousand. So over here, if yours does not say, obviously mine says um, twenty four dollar sign thirty equals twenty four thousand. Um, more than likely, yours does not. Um, if you've never hooked up a spindle, but to change it. To configure it, you basically put in the MIDI window, MDI window, put dollar sign 30 equals 24,000. And what that'll do is it will basically configure the, if I scroll down to the, where is it? Uh, there it is. If I scroll up, there it is. So there's my command, dollar sign 30 equals 24,000. Okay. So now if I come back over to the MIDI window and hit that dollar sign dollar sign again, and actually we can hit clear over here so we got a clearer screen, hit send. We can see down here towards the bottom or towards the uh, towards the bottom here, we've got dollar sign 30 equals 24,000. Now I can change that to other things just so we can see that it actually does work. Let's put a uh, 10,000. And then I will clear. We will enter a dollar sign, dollar sign, and you can see down here, dollar sign 30 equals 10,000. There it is. But again, the value we want is 24,000. So I'm going to enter that in there, run a dollar sign, dollar sign just to confirm, and dollar sign 30 equals 24,000. Now the other two settings are probably already configured for you. This is the minimum spindle speed, which is dollar sign 31. Uh, probably z it's probably already set to zero. Um, and then of course the, uh, the dollar sign 32 is basically a laser mode Boolean. Um, it basically says, are you running a laser? Um, yes or no. And the no is zero. And here we are right here, dollar sign 32 equals zero. So I've configured my uh, Gerbil settings. Um, so those are all ready to go. And now we're ready to move on to, uh, guess what? Testing. Okay, so on page uh, 24 of the manual, you'll find a section called automatic testing control. This is where we're actually gonna enter in a couple of G-code commands into this MIDI window section of Carbide Motion so that we can see exactly that the, that the motor is actually doing what we would like it to do. Now, the first thing we'd want to do is say, hey, let's run the, via, uh, the spindle at 6,000 RPMs. So the easy it's a super easy command. We're going to hit M3, which says start the spindle moving forward, S6000. When you hit that, hit enter. Um, it sends that signal over the PWM line, and now there is um, that many volts coming through that line, uh, the PWM line, and up here we can see that it is running, um, since our motor is a 0 to 400 hertz um, motor, which means when it's running 400 hertz, it's running at the maximum speed uh, or the maximum RPMs, which is 24,000, sort of a, a moving scale, right? Um, so if we're running at 100 hertz, it's going to run at 6,000 RPMs. 
run at 200 hertz, half the speed, it's going to run at half the RPMs, which is 12,000 RPMs. So you can see here, I don't actually have the motor running, so we're not risking anything by testing this out to making sure it works. When we enter in M3 S6000, we expect to see um, 100 hertz, or give or take a few hertz, um, on, the v on the VFD's display. Now, if we switch this to M3 S12000, we can see that the RPMs, I'm sorry, the hertz, uh, switches to 200 hertz, um, which means half the speed, again, 12,000. So, again, if we switch this to S24000, M3 space S24000, it will run at the maximum speed of 400 hertz. To, uh, to round this out, if we hit M5, it'll basically say stop, uh, stop the spindle, um, and we can see that verified on the screen that it's actually running at zero hertz. Um, if I were, so during your automation procedure, what you're going to do is when you're ready to run your, um, run your spindle, or run your code, you're going to run it, and you're going to hit this run command, which puts the spindle and the motor, uh, the VFD and the spindle motor, into running state. So, obviously the dial doesn't work anymore. We're running it based on here. So if we, down here, now that we're in a running state, if we down here, if we put M3 S6000, the spindle is now running at um, 6,000 RPMs, or roughly roughly 6,000 RPMs. So in this case, it's showing us uh, 63, and it looks like I've got one additional setting I need to set here. Let's uh, hit M5, and there's a, another setting in the manual. Um, if you've got one of my later machines, you, this setting is already configured for you, so there's no need to worry about it, but if you don't, um, and yours also showed, like mine did, um, 600 point something, we want to change that. So we're going to hit stop mode, switch this to 516. So P5.0.16. And this is only if you have that decimal point that's sticking out in the place. Um, we're going to change that to a zero. Hit enter mode to get out of the programming mode. Go ahead and hit run. Now, whenever I set S M3 space 6, S M3 space S6000, it'll actually show an actual 6000 um, speed there. And of course, if I were to put a tachometer on the motor, it would show that it was running at 6000. And just like before, if we run our test with S um, M3 space S12000, it then spins it up to 12,000 RPMs. M5, of course, stops the RPMs, um, sets it to zero, stops the uh, thing. Now, before you go in for a bit change, make sure you hit the stop button. We want this flashing before you go in and reach for your, uh, reach for your bit changes. Okay, so hopefully you found that uh, informative and helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. You can also reach out to us at support at pwncnc.com, and we're more than willing to help you out. I've got multiple people um, following that particular inbox, so if you have any questions or comments, just send them there. Multiple people will probably answer and jump in and answer them um, so that you can have the best information possible. Um, but again, this is Daniel with Pwn CNC, and remember, don't just own your CNC, dominate it.